What was a great thing ruined by popularity? Bothers. Basically they're small cottages in remote parts of the Scottish Highlands that are left unlocked, free to be used for shelter by people traveling the mountains. They are not well furnished or anything, but they act as a freely usable weatherproof shelter for anyone to use in a country where summer usually just means the rain is slightly less frigid. It used to be that they weren't too well known, the hill walking community used them, maintained them, and everyone observed an unwritten code of conduct where you'd make sure to leave it tidy, clean and ready for the next person to use. However, they suddenly experienced an upsurge in awareness, and a lot of them suffered for it. People would go to them so they could have a piss up in a scenic location and leave them covered in rubbish and shit. Literal shit. They are normally refurbished from long abandoned houses and frequently don't have toilets, so they are equipped with a shovel to bury your waste. People seem to think they were free holiday homes that they could just take over. Some people just vandalize them for the fun of it. As a result, they are suffered quite a bit. They should offer shelter for bad weather and a safe place to sleep, but now you have a bunch of entitled, lazy assholes who go and wreck them. To some extent, amusement slash theme parks. They have to be popular to justify building new, state-of-the-art attractions, but eventually get so crowded that you need to buy special passes and get on a ride in less than two hours and can barely even find a place to sit when you want to rest for a minute. I live near Six Flags Great America, outside of Chicago. Anytime I've gone in the last 10 years it's been a ridiculous mass of humanity. More rides than ever, but every decent ride is like a 2 hour wait. Find a smaller amusement park and go on a cloudy day and on a weekday. Cloudy days and weekdays tend to deter the huge crowds. Avoid any Halloween or fall event. I had to give up on amusement parks too. They are just places to corral the public now and charge them insane amounts of money for food, drink, admission and everything else. Wait in the beating sun for 2 hours for one 2 minute ride that is not worth your time. The small parks in my area charge just as much as the big ones now, it's just there is less stuff at them and less crowds. But a lot of these are undown and well, aren't worth going to, especially when the cost adds up to close to what the larger parks are charging. In my area we have sub per theme parks that seem to charge as much as Disney does for way less of an experience, and it's not just me either, others are realizing this as well. The problem is the small parks that are good, unless you actually live near them, you have to travel to them, and that can be expensive. One good park is Nobles in PA, however if you don't live near it, it's going to be expensive to visit. There are a few parks in the USA like this that are good. If you want a big park, it's best to save up the money and travel to go to the best one, even if you have to save for a few years to make it happen, because that is more worth it than spending crazy admission prices for a subpar park where you will not have a good time. It's the type of thing where you get what you pay for, but you have to decide carefully or you could be wasting a lot of money. Last year I did the Utah National and State Parks during the early spring off season and the measures they are taking to try to accommodate the massive number of visitors during the summer is incredible. Parking, lodging, sanitation, and safety are all becoming problems, and I hope that these places don't become victims of their own popularity. Arches really seems to attract people doing stupid dangerous shit. The iconic delicate arch is like a magnet for morons who don't prepare for the trail, take risky selfies, vandalize and climb on things, and drink in places where there's 360 degrees of cliffs around you. Stupid and dangerous is a pretty low bar in many of those areas. We went to arches on a family vacation back in 89 or 90. Dad planned us a long hike, something like 14 miles. Dad, mom, my brother, 10, and I, 7. We had a lot of fun. Lots of cliffs, several places where we, the kids, had to jump across crevices that were probably 20 feet deep, and sections along the ridge of large formations with a probably death level of fall on either side. I didn't find out until I was about 25, and we were talking about that trip, that we were way out of our depth, and that dad was legitimately worried that this was going to become a capital P problem somewhere along the way. My mom still gets mad at him about it from time to time because it was stupid and dangerous and put us at risk. His mistake? 
underestimating the amount of water we should take for that hike, and not appreciating the difference between 10 miles in the Smoky Mountains and 10 miles in the Utah desert. Side note, it's a testament to my parents' ability to keep their shit together under stress that we kids never knew that anything was wrong. They kept moving forward because anything else wasn't going to be helpful and getting us scared would have been extremely counterproductive. Now it's a family lesson in both not making stupid decisions and in dealing with problems constructively. Okay I'm going to mix it up. Silphium, the plant used as a form of, likely very effective, birth control in the ancient Mediterranean. For this reason, and because it was apparently delicious, it gained popularity as a spice, aphrodisiac, and general cure-all, and became worth its weight in gold. Julius Caesar stockpiled the stuff, and it is one of the most plausible origins of the heart symbol, and the association of that symbol with romance, and doing the sex to people. Unfortunately, it only grew wild in and around Serene, and over-harvesting by the Romans after their takeover of the city drove Silphium into extinction by the time of Nero. Ah and that's why we had to wait 2000 years for the pill. Ebb and the idea of renting free room or sofa isn't bad at all. It turned into hard bus scenes, when companies owning dozens of apartments rent them to tourists, meanwhile there is an apartment price and rent crisis. I guess living here isn't going to be affordable for middle class anymore. Yik yak. I loved yik yak in college. It was hilarious and had juicy anonymous gossip on it and it was a great place to just put down random thoughts. Then it started growing and people started using it for making blatantly racist comments anonymously. That led to more shit that assholes would put on their like, putting people's full names in their stories and making bomb threats. A great example of a few people ruining it for everyone else. Surprised no one has said this yet but Netflix. Netflix was definitely ruined by its popularity, not in the traditional the consumers are at fault and made it bad, but because so many people loved Netflix every damn company had to make their own inferior version of it. Friendly reminder that shows like The Office gained popularity because they were on platforms people already owned, not because they paid for Netflix to get The Office. Honestly even though I hate them as a company Disney was in the right for making a streaming service, since they had a justifiable amount of content to form their own platform, but every other TV streaming service is crazy for thinking most people will pay for their shit, rather than resorting to pirating it. Any nice nature place to go hiking slash swimming slash barbecue slash any cool outdoor activity. Some sweet nature spots have been ruined because of too much popularity, either there's a landscape planning with paths, guards etc to protect it, or the amount of people coming here wrecks the place, or access becomes forbidden for safety issues well. I know a cliff is a dangerous area where I could fall, you don't need to forbid access to it because of the unavoidable Karen who, eventually, won't watch his kids and sue you for lack of safety. Nice preserved places are like mushroom picking spots, gotta keep as much as you can. I require a lot of trust to show you my secret beaches slash cabins in the woods. And if I see it on your Instagram or your friend's one, I'll be under your bed tonight. Anim conventions. Used to be a fun time to be weird and nerdy with a bunch of really weird and nerdy people with shoestring budgets. Now it's a bunch of professional cosplayers who make costumes for a living and large commercial things being marketed, and a lot of parents with their kids. Edit, to the people thinking I hate, when kids come to conventions with their parents, please read literally any of my other replies about it. I wasn't saying, having a parent with their kid at a con, is a bad thing. I was saying, that the more popular conventions get, the more problematic interactions I run into due to the not good combinations showing up more often. Records and LPs. I got back into record collecting again in around 2009-2010. Back then multiple albums were being given away for free in my local area. Nobody really cared. I must have got at least 50 or 60 albums for free or literally pennies back then from people who were just going to toss them out. Fairly decent stuff too. Hello, Super Tramp, Bob Dylan, Dire Straits, Queen, Pink Floyd, Fleetwood Mac etc. Contrast to that with now, and people seem to think all their albums on vinyl are uber collectible, and try and charge extortionate amounts for literally rubbish like Richard Clayleman or Herb Albert or similar. 
this is all because the vinyl revival has become so popular with people buying cheap crappy costly cruises and being happy to pay more for a single album than what their cheap turntable is worth. It's madness lol. Harry Potter. Yes, I was an original, like, before there were any movies or a fourth book, fan, and I was obsessed. Could recite anything from the books from memory obsessed. And no, I'm not mad that everybody started liking them. I'm mad that the popularity made the author so goddamn rich that she wouldn't quit and keeps going back to wring the udder dry and give us constant updates that are ever more stupid, convoluted, and contradictory, and you have to watch prequels and play mobile games and visit theme parks to even get it all, and I can no longer care to even find out the new canon, let alone try to revel in it like I once did. Sometimes less is more, 